And we are live. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Angie Atkinson, and I'm here with the lovely and talented Lise Colucci. Lise, welcome back. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let me see if I can mute myself. Okay. So yes. today we thought we would talk about spiritual and religious narcissists, and then, of course, spiritual and religious abuse. So Lise, do you want to start us off? Oh, wait. Uh, before we jump in into all of this, uh, make sure you keep an eye on the chat for um, Huffle Mama. She's one of our mod squads. She's going to share with you all the information on how to connect with us every week on this stream. And we're just going to jump right into our talk. So Lise, do you want to start us off with a definition of spiritual or religious abuse? Well, they, a narcissistic person or any toxic person that's manipulating you might use your spirituality against you, your religion, your faith, whatever it is. Um, they might infiltrate into a religious group. A communal narcissist will then get the whole group to believe they are this super spiritual, amazing, wonderful person, but actually behind closed doors, they are abusing someone or manipulating or hurting someone else emotionally mm -hmm. in their life. Um, they're, they're using, I mean, that's basically it, right? They use religion, faith, spirituality, mm -hmm. your beliefs. It can even go far as your, your social beliefs against, right? against you. Yes. Yes. And you know, when you're, when you're, the, the people don't realize it because a lot of times you'll have like a minister of a church, a big church or, or a cult leader or a, you know, someone who you see as an authority figure could be a, a family member or not. And, and this person, you, like, I won't mention any specific churches, but there is a specific church uh, that has struck. Thank you, Huffle Mom. Uh, there's a specific church that has um, had some scandals within their ranks, and there were some children involved in these horrible things. There's a few of those, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess I'm not really calling anybody out. Um, but the point is, what happens is you have a leader. And this person, or not even just a leader, it could be a parent who's just very religious, right? Or a, or a spouse or any, anyone. And they sort of control you through the dogma of that religion, the traditions, the practices, whatever. And you see this a lot, like um, you see a lot of cult leaders. If you can actually take a cult leader, Dana Morningstar first suggested this to me. And it's a great, um, and I've done videos on it, where you can take a cult leader and a narcissist. And draw a lot of parallels, right? Between well, yeah, because a lot of them probably are narcissistic. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. But but even in regular churches where they're, you know, healthy, normal churches from the outside, you will see people, whether they're in a minister role or the deacon type role or whatever, or they're just your family member. You mm -hmm. see them controlling people through that. So Lisa, have you experienced that yourself? Um, not so much personally. I have a lot of people I've talked to who have experienced this. Um, yeah, I've yeah. seen it. Oh, actually I have experienced it personally an entire, yeah. but this was more like the communal, the whole group. You couldn't mm -hmm. tell who the perpetrating narcissistic person was. It was the whole group seemed narcissistic and toxic. And they, if you didn't, if you didn't follow the, the, the structure they put down, if you questioned anything, if you had a thought of your own any anything of your own it was looked upon as like against them and then it felt very narcissistic to me um yeah um Absolutely. one thing i did i i do see and have experienced is a toxic person um using faith to manipulate through guilt mm. and using you know you're going against the faith or whatever the, the spirituality if you don't agree with them if you mm -hmm. if you don't like say a narcissistic mother for example might a, a religious abusively a re religious narcissistic mother might say well you know it says you're supposed to um, honor your parents and you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that while at the same time they're being so manipulative controlling and toxic to you that there's no way you could do those things Mm -hmm. You have to go against your own, Absolutely. your own safety in order to follow the moral teaching that they're claiming the religion has, which the religion may have that teaching, but they forget their side is also supposed to be to be a good person and 
can be virtuous right. enough. You know, like right. it, 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 they twist it up. They use it as gaslighting is what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. Yeah. That's so true. And, and like, here's an example. So um, I had one client who was in a certain church that didn't approve of divorce. And she was married mm -hmm. to an abuser, like a, an, an emotional abuser. He didn't mm -hmm. physically abuse her as far as I'm aware. But because of that, this, she, she was not allowed to divorce her husband because mm -hmm. she believed so strongly in this particular group's beliefs. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it took a long time to coach her into, you know, she needed to go and speak to the church leadership about whether she could divorce this. And I certainly would never try to affect anyone's faith negatively. I mean, I know that so many people find comfort in their faith, right? But there's this other side of it that's so, these people coming in under the, the guise of, you know, where you're religious leaders or you're religious, like in certain groups, like the, the husband is the, the family religious leader and he does all the things for the, you know, makes the choices for the family or, you know, depending on the circumstances. And in this case, it was just very ugly. <laughs> So, well, it, that's, um, it's like they get, they, they use in that case, a narcissistic husband would use the, the construct of the religion, which is that the husband is the religious leader, right or wrong. That is the, it doesn't matter what we think about it. it that is what the people believe who are involved in it. And that right. works for them and it mm -hmm. works for their, their beliefs. So there's no judgment on that. But the problem is narcissistic people know how to get themselves into the position of power. So they'll yes. actually seek out the religions that offer that as a, as a method of um, power. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be going to a religion that said both people are equal. Right. That wouldn't work exactly. for them. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. And so you've got to be, that's not to say everyone there is narcissistic, but the narcissistic person, they seek out positions in life, whether it be in religion or in social groups Mm -hmm. that give them the power. Right, right. It's ridiculous. And you know, on that, on that same note, you see people using, like you can see entirely, here's where we talk about the communal narcissism stuff, right? Where you see these people um, <clears throat> using their beliefs to tear down other humans in the world, to express racism and prejudice and all this other nasty, horrible stuff, right? Um, and I won't, again, I'm not going to call it any specific religion because everybody's different and everybody has their, you know, not every group within a particular religion is toxic. There are plenty, I'm sure, of healthy groups out there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I just saw a question from someone. Oh, another thing I want to talk about, too, is um, altruistic narcissists. Oh, you yeah. find a lot of those people in the church, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So those are people who are... I'm such a good person and I would just give you the shirt off my back, but as long as you recognize them and meet whatever conditions that they will have as a result of whatever favor they're doing for you, mm -hmm. right? So this happened to me once. Um, when I left my ex-husband, the narcissist, I went, I had, I had one child at the time and he was just a little child. He was just about 16 months old. Well, I had to get a job, a different job. I had a job where I could take him to work with me at the time, but I wasn't making enough money doing that. So I had to get a different job. So in that process, I also had to find, of course, daycare. Well, daycare was very expensive, as I'm sure every parent here knows. <laughs> and I wasn't making enough money to support all of that, plus my house at the time and my ex-husband. He wasn't paying his child support. And even if he was, it wouldn't have been enough to cover daycare anyway. <laughs> right. So, right. So my toxic parent um, made a deal with me. I'll cover half your daycare as long as you do these things, a list of things that included going to church every week. Um, and in that case, I took the chocolate, as Richard Grannon used to say, because I needed her help and I had no other choice as far as I could tell at the time outside of like selling my body, which I didn't think anybody would buy. I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> <laughs> but in order to, to stay afloat and not have to go on any sort of public aid, I did this. And it was not my, my particular uh, choice of spiritual uh, experiences, but it was not, you know, it was not so traumatic, but it was a situation where I took the chocolate as, like I said, so, and that's not really, is that abuse? No, it wasn't abuse in that case. It was not abuse to make somebody go to church, I guess, but it felt controlling to me because it, it was yeah. not just it's, that. Right? It's a piece of the pie, right? It's just yes. a piece of, yes. of 
her need to make you go to church, probably a particular church and probably yes. at particular times yes. so, that, so that she could, yeah, so that she could have a presence there that was an extension of her. Let's just say this. It, she already had a very large presence there. She oh, yeah. was one of the people. Well, if you lunch. weren't there, then you're, then it would look like what's wrong with you that your daughter doesn't even come. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of different elements here. We've got people in cults. We've got people in regular churches that everybody thinks are healthy, normal churches. And, and, and we've got people in families and we've got people in these little, like, I don't want to call them like the different S-E-C-T-S, that word is hard to say yeah, <laughs> without yeah. sounding like you're without saying sounding like you're saying something else and then having yes. it be, yeah. yes. dinged. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I have talked to so many people in um, coaching who are involved in communities like yoga or, or spiritual communities that are not religions per se, but more of a, um, I thought that the person was out for good and and peace and and like they're spouting all these these amazing things mm -hmm. how could they be a narcissist that's exactly right i'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. that's exactly what we see yeah and so often people are just like and I, how many times have you had talked to you about that i mean a, a lot like mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it comes out peripherally and then like wait a minute are they involved in <laughs> yeah yeah uh-huh okay and so now you not only have the emotional abuse from the relationship that you've had, you, the thing that you're going to, to support you through, because a lot of people go to those type of communities and those types of spiritual mm -hmm. for personal growth. They're not necessarily yeah. there for a religion. They're there for personal growth or um, they're going through a hard time and that's why they're there. So they're the perfect place for predators to get in and abuse people. Absolutely. It's, it's unacceptable. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's see here. Oops, I just accidentally pushed the wrong button. I hate when I do that. <laughs> All right. So, so I think I think the point is, I would like to ask our those who are here live and those who are here watching on the replay, what exactly? If you have personally experienced this, please share as much as you're comfortable. If you have questions, let us know. Let us try to help you. And and this could also, you know, provide future. We could talk about it again in a future live stream, or at least I could both make videos about it. Either way, we want to hear your thoughts about spiritual and religious abuse by narcissists um, or anything like that. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, here we go. Uh, Jack would like to know how, can you talk about how communal covert narcissists manipulate and use religious communities for their abuse? Oh, you want to start there? All day. Yeah. <laughs> they, they will, well, first of all, they have basically a harem. They have a following within the group because they show up they show up with charisma with or or humbleness or um they look like the perfect person to follow the person perfect they don't look like what they are when they are behind closed doors and so people flock to them people look up to them people um listen to their side, but if I've had clients try to leave people like that and they have had the entire community turn on them. And these are not churches where you are, when you're out, you're out. These are churches where people come and go and they've had entire communities turn on them because how could that, that person possibly be toxic? It must be you. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so they, so that's one way they, I've seen that. Yeah. Well, and they're also, here's the thing. They are doing good sometimes. Right. That's they're the doing, thing. <laughs> they're doing lots of good sometimes. Mm -hmm. They're yes. just not good in relationships. Right. There are a couple of uh, famous ministers who did a lot of good in the world, but also, and I won't, again, I'm not going to call Yeah. There's no things. need to name them because it's just, it's everywhere. So yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And there are plenty of less famous ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. It's just, I guess what it, it is, is you can't, you can't think, you know, someone by what they look like on the outside and how they present themselves in groups of people. Mm. It's how yes. people treat people intimately behind closed doors. And we can't know that. And so if someone comes to, if someone comes to you in a group and says, wow, this, I'm going to divorce this person. They've really hurt me. I mean, yeah. 
you got to at least, at least let them have their speak, you know, like have a, have their truth. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree. And I'm going to go on to the next question. Um, Jose says someone entered my home just because she was a very spiritual friend, but at the end she resulted in, in an integrated psychopath that almost destroyed my family. Beware of the wolves wearing sheep's clothing or acting like sheep's, he said. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the thing. That's the hard part of it is when you meet someone like that and they seem so like down to earth and spiritual and loving and all this stuff, it's confusing. As Jack mentions, yeah, predators often disguise themselves this way. I'm here to help so they can get an easier pick of a flock, so to speak. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of them maybe are even doing that to deceive themselves into believing that they are that thing. Right. I don't I don't think that I think that a lot of people like that who are narcissistic want to believe the mask that they're wearing. They they yeah. they have this moral like um it, how do I word this? It's like if they can do all these things then they are that mask that they put on which is those things and then all the dirty secret stuff they can do with no one looking right and then they can redeem themselves through doing all those good things it's it's plausible deniability that we're talking about here which is what i'm gonna talk about tomorrow so <laughs> that yeah and um, that's during your live stream tomorrow yeah it's yeah i'm gonna talk okay about so those of you who haven't time. yeah been over to lisa's channel yet it's lisa colucci narcissistic abuse recovery uh support and right here in the chat i believe the helpful mom sent a link to that she will again at the end and i will or someone might <laughs> and i will also include a link at the end of this video and on the in the description below while we're talking about that really quickly least is this something that ever comes up in your group coaching oh yeah yeah communal yeah. narcissism yeah because a lot a lot because people by the, by the time they come in they're first of all people who come into group when they've had this happen are afraid to enter group because groups mm -hmm. have turned on them Fair but enough. then once they realize they're safe and they start talking and they start to see oh my gosh this real this person really did manipulate an entire group of people they or my or my church or my a lot of people with um who have been pushed out of churches pushed out of religious groups because they are standing up against somebody being toxic to them and it's usually not the minister. It's usually a partner with that. Right. I talk to. Yeah. I think that's really helpful. I think it's usually the partner you said that I've talked to. Yes. I mean, okay. that's, what, that's my experience. The person is they, they're dealing with a toxic partner who's like high friends with the pastor friends yeah. with the, you know, it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I have a client right now who's going through absolute H E double hobby states with the church that she's been a member of for many years. Her husband passed away. It's a whole thing. I'm not going to go into a bunch of details about her life, but suffice to say that the church ladies have been very unacceptably rude to this woman who, to be fair, lost her husband at a very young age and is very attractive. And I believe they are very threatened by her. Oh, and yeah. I feel really upset about this for her, but it's, it's a whole other thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, ugly. it's hard. Yeah. I know. And also what can happen is you have um, this try, trying to word this uh, anonymously here. <laughs> um, so you can have the way a narcissist works in these kind of situations is they'll take a thread of truth mm -hmm. to, to people. Right. And then if you say, but wait a minute, this person did X, Y, and Z to me, they will find a moral topic to say you're against. Mm-hmm. Does that make, am I making sense? So they'll find a, mor so. a moral topic, an ethical topic, a social topic. It could be anything. Yes. So And, let's, and then yep. it could be, I mean, I can't think of anything. I'm too, it's too specific in my head. So, <laughs> you know, so let's I, say the moral topic is plastic water bottles. Okay. Yeah. So they will say <laughs> that you don't stand for, you don't stand up for the rights of plastic water bottles because blah, blah, blah. And you're like, wait, this isn't about that. This is, this is about you cheating on me with three women I, that everybody here knows. Yes. And, and they say, <laughs> yes, but you know, 
you don't you don't stand up for the plastic water bottle and we need to really talk about that and then and then all the church people or the group people or the social people in the community Mm -hmm. think they're doing you a favor by intervening because you really need to stand up for those plastic water bottles because the plastic water bottles are are they're really important it's a really important topic and it might be and that's the thing it probably is an important topic i'm not minimizing those plastic water bottles (laughs) but for real yeah so then you're like well no i believe in the plastic water bottles that's cool but they're cheating they're cheating and they're take they're using the plastic water bottles to get the women, you know, like, right. you know or right. the exactly. whatever. Yeah. 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 Deflection. And, it, yeah. and they deflect and it, it twists all the truths. And so, but the, the people in the community only see, it's like people grab onto the cause. They grab onto the moral meaning and then, and they don't even see the thing the narcissist did. And I would tend to bet that there's a lot of that going on in the news right now. We're not going to talk about that. Anymore. It is. And people are afraid <laughs> to stand up against that toxic person. Yes. hundred percent. Yes. They don't want to be on the receiving end. No. And that's why we're sitting here talking in such generalities on some level too. Oh right? yeah. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have the spiritual badass who says, hello, by the way, um, I had a horrible experience with the West, a certain church <laughs> protecting my perpetrator. Oh, the perpetrator who put my life in danger, exposing my whereabouts to my oh. ex and my family or, and his family or her family. I offered an easy resolution, but the church sided with the perpetrator. Instead, it was horrid. This is more common than any of us would like to believe, unfortunately. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, um, there's all is, kinds of ways that happens. There's reasons that happens, and it is not your fault. It's the right. It's the it's the manipulation. People don't it's, get what gaslighting is. Yeah, exactly. And it's not always just like the minister. It's a lot of like I was mentioning earlier, church ladies, or it's. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's this the, group or that group. Yeah. Like ridiculous, like a little high school situation. Over there. And then, yeah. And oftentimes the person in at the top, so to speak, the minister, the pastor, the community leader, whatever it is, mm-hmm. they're trying to peace keep. Yep. And they're trying to see both sides and offer. Everyone has an opportunity to change. Everyone makes mistakes. They're not thinking they're not. narcissists don't change. Right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's see. Um, Jack says, I'm very glad it was more, it's more places than just here where he is because he's dealing with similar issues, I guess. Um, And then Bonnie, hey, Bonnie, another member of the squad in the house. Um, She says, my dear narcissist mother kept me reading into slavehood for decades using, you should honor your mother, hooked into slavehood, sorry, (laughs) using, you should honor your mother as it states in the Bible. I got a lot of that too, my friend. Mm-hmm. For that too mm-hmm. honor your parents all this ugh, don't even start me okay now that look now that you shouldn't respect parents who are decent people <laughs> but or not parents... that that's a bad idea it's or or, or teaching. Right. it's just that they have to be good they're, people and they're twisting it so yes it's, it's, you know there's just like i told the lady with the, the church that wouldn't let her get divorced i mean do you honestly think that God would want you to stay in a relationship where you're actively being abused? I mean, I'm just curious, like, yeah. you know, because that's, and again, no disrespect to any, any religion, but I truly don't believe that any God that I've ever heard of would ever want you to be <laughs> in some sort of Mm-mm. physically or emotionally abusive situation for your whole life. Just my personal opinion. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, Jack mentions that he, he sees the same thing with that spiritual badass mentioned about the same thing happening in, in his denomination as well. Um, to which spiritual badass replies that uh, they've put three years into disciplined counseling education and then the application of everything they've learned to get through it. Hard, but worth it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, hey, help. How are you? Um, okay. Okay. Michael, uh, Michelle Frost mentions a specific, (laughs) I'm not going to mention the the name. Y'all can look in the chat if you want to find Michelle's comment, but she says a certain uh, denomination is training narcissists under the guise of a religion. And I will say this about that. Mm. I had an experience, (laughs) several, but one in high school with someone who was, I thought my friend and it turned out, no, (laughs) turned out I was, I was, she was trying to convert me, which was very funny considering who I was the child of, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would have never been a thing. All right. 
Uh, spiritual badass says cult of spirituality, I call it. Yoga light workers, teachers of narcissistic abuse, tarot fraud, fortune tellers, cults of commandments. Okay, so certainly there is a certain amount of that in the community. In fact, um, there, we're sort of launching a movement around the narcissistic abuse stuff because you know, we're, we're working to create some, some guidelines and best practices for creators, coaches, and therapists with other creators, coaches, and therapists coming soon. But um, that's, that's all I can do for that. But as far as it goes, you're right. There are so many uh, people out there, even people who are like, you know, MLMs are becoming cult-like even, you know, <laughs> with their, the way that they're indoctrinating people and helping them to, oh, helping, I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> A lot of these MLMs are, you know, I'm sure you've, some of you have seen the Lululemon thing that was on the news, or not the news, but the Netflix documentary anyway. Um, I saw some of it, like I got distracted and stopped watching because ADHD, but, <laughs> but it's, yeah. So I don't know, uh, there, it's, it's everywhere. Any, any group has the potential to become that way. And that's why we try to be really careful with our boundaries, Lisa and I, as we work mm -hmm. with people in that way, yeah. Um, thank you for, for the comp compliment on the game face, Jack. I, I'm trying to look less crappy because people have been mentioning that I don't look well and I'm just fine. I just sometimes don't wear makeup. <laughs> so, and, and I'm old. And so when I don't wear makeup and I'm old, it just doesn't look that good. <laughs> it is what it yeah, is. It's what we have. <laughs> we didn't know about it. Two old ladies sitting here. <laughs> old ladies, y'all. At least we're cute old ladies or whatever sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Some of us. So we're so well. <laughs> Close, close. Okay, we're close. Woo! I'm not negative. I'm positive. All right. Um, <laughs> Michelle says, sadly, narcissists love positions where they will, they will where they will encounter vulnerable people. Oh yeah, you are so right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm trying to get to the. Okay. Okay. Spiritual badass says, I don't know the guest name, but I lost three career three careers to cult spiritualists who destroyed me with their narcissism. That's awful, I can't even imagine. Um, <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, love your name again, I know I tell you that every time, but here it goes. <laughs> says, the narcissist I know is a channeler, oh boy, at a spiritual church who gives messages, oh my gosh, to people they are preying on, then directs them to a meetup they run where other con artists can manipulate them. Mm -hmm. That is awful and you know what oh i'm, I'm getting this I, I know i know i've seen this i've seen it too yeah i'm thinking of one in particular yeah uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah and you'll see it on certain other platforms as well with these um maybe this one too i don't know about youtube but uh these card readers with their shuffling and <laughs> they're not as bad as the ones who are well it doesn't matter i'm not i'm not anti anyone i mean there are that's i'm not gonna that's all um, again, here I am tiptoeing and walking on eggshells. I know here. it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, not that one. Nope. <laughs> We're not going to watch it because it's not that I'm anti anything. You know no, what I'm saying? There's no. no one group that I'm like, I hate that group. Never. Well, I mean, I guess what can we do about, what can you do if you're in, if you're in, how do you know? What do you do? Like, you don't want to be afraid Perfect. to go to church. You don't want to go, you don't want to be afraid to be in a community. It's right. one thing I had happen once, and I'm, I did remember that I did actually have this happen in a in a church type setting, mm -hmm. where the person I was talking to was somebody that offered a teaching of the religion, so they were high enough to be someone you're supposed to be able to look up to, and you're supposed yeah. to be able to trust. All right, and I question. I always question everyone, but as questioning <laughs> the, and they they would make comments like. Um, do as I say, don't watch my actions. Mm, mm, and mm. I'm like, okay, they know. And then so finally I realized they know, they know that something's wrong with them. But the thing mm -hmm. is they're teaching their understanding of this, of this religion was spot on. They had all, they had it down. So what I had to do to stay safe was get the information and stay away from mm. the person. Yeah. And then find somebody else to, you know, to, to talk to instead of that person. hundred percent. Does that make, yeah. you know, like you have, it's there, people are going to be there. We can't run away all the time right. from this. Yeah. Right. And um, here's something else that you can do. And, and I think this is really helpful. I noticed Hope mentioned something about uh, the church being that she was attending, being uncomfortable with 
her sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I really struggle with that, but I do know this hope. I know there are denominations out there who are very accepting and loving no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to suggest to you that if you want to go to church, look at a different church. Yep. I know, and I'm not trying to call out any specific one, but I know that um, one, one that does very openly and and even has um, homosexual ministers is is United Church of Christ. But I'm not, I'm not in any way endorsing that church or negatively talking about that church. It's just, I'm just an mentioning example of one. It's an example of one denomination that that offers uh, a that accepts an accepting and loving uh, right. of all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of right, right. They don't have any. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. I have about three more minutes. Um, let's see here. But with that being said, um, please. Yes. Do you have anything else to say? <laughs> <laughs> about this <laughs> before we wrap up <laughs> about the whole topic yeah like because i we're running out of time unfortunately yeah, so um now without a question I mean, okay let me just say this uh, guys we are unfortunately on a short time today because we have well i i have a call in five minutes with the client um but two things number one hi ted barry Number two, uh, if you will please leave your thoughts here in this chat or after the video goes live in the comments below about your questions, your comments, your ideas, anything you want us to talk about regarding this topic or even another topic, we can definitely revisit this here in a live stream or and or make new videos about it. So, and I also have some existing videos. Do you have any existing videos on this topic, Lise? A couple, I think. Okay. Maybe All right. So now. I'm... I want to, I, I wish I could stay longer. Okay, guys, let me say this to you also. Um, Lease offers group coaching and it's much less expensive than one-on-one. So if anybody's interested in that, reach out to her or go to queenbeing.com slash groups. You can also go to queenbeing.com slash Lise to learn more about her and her one-on-one stuff. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Otherwise, we will see you next Tuesday. I should have a new video for you tomorrow. Lise has a live stream tomorrow around what time do you know yet? I do not know. I haven't looked at my calendar yet tomorrow. Okay, So make sure that you I'll sign up for a couple her more this week. So, okay. A couple more coming from, from Lee's this week. Make sure you go over and you subscribe to her channel and hit the bell notification and helpful mom. If she hasn't yet, she did at the beginning of the stream. She'll put in our, our text messages, text message information. <laughs> I can't talk so that you can be sure to sign up for text as a backup to show up, you know, to the YouTube notifications that are sometimes a little wonky. Okay. (laughs) Thank you all for showing up today and being here with us. Thank you for sharing yourselves with us. We really appreciate you. And as always, thanks for being part of our day. All right. Lisa, I'll see you soon. Everybody else, I'll see you next week and tomorrow in a video. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. You too.